welcome back guys just a quick update um, that's how the car sits at the moment I've hit a hit a bit of a hurdle with my radiator I've ordered a Mishimoto non M um, E46 radiator to replace this stock one however I think Mishimoto must be still making it or they're delaying deliveries here to Australia because uh, I ordered it oh, maybe nearly two months ago and I've been told it's going to come either end of this month or next month which is this day and age pretty atlas so I hope they'd pull their finger out and actually make this radiator for me but um, I've only got to do the radiator finish off the, the hoses got to mount this coolant tank up here somewhere out of the way um, join the radio oh, I've done the heater hoses just got to put one heater hose to that that nipple there and then mount that I'll be mounting the catch can just here um, what else have I got oh I finished the exhaust this is the legal exhaust um, for the engineer so standard M54 uh, six-cylinder exhaust system except then I've um, I've just knocked up some bodgy transitions from um, from a two inch into a two and a half which then goes into my um, yeah X pipe twin cat so I've just got to get some exhaust wrap and wrap these the, this um, yeah it's this one here this is on the left hand side of the car it gets quite close to the um, clutch line and also the fuel lines and the fuel filter that run along the chassis rail along the left side of the, of the chassis so I've got to get um, I'll put those in along with that after I do this so I'll pick this up today it's fun this long two-piece tail shaft set of a BA Ford Falcon um, here in Australia. So um, this yoke will fit straight in the back of the the Tremec that I've got in the, um, the transmission in the, that I've got in the car. Um, I'm going to use this existing Guibo. I'm going to use this portion of the tail shaft. I'll cut it somewhere. Um, and then weld it to the E46. So I've got to get onto the car. Uh, first, I'll, I'll, I'll chop this and um, get on the car, do a quick measurement, see where I'm at. There's plenty of play in this. I mean, that's where the seal sits in the back of an automatic on the BA Falcon. Um, yeah, anywhere around here. So I've got a good, I'd say, 20. 20 mil, 25 mil an inch, three quarters to an inch. Um, then I can, um, yep, yeah, weld or just tack it into place. Um, and I might even have a crack at welding it myself. If it doesn't work out well, yeah, I can um, always do another one. So this tile shaft only cost me $50. I pulled it out myself at, um, at a nearby wrecker, wrecking yard which is really good because everybody with a Falcon that's wrecking their backyard, especially those dreamers in Sydney want a good 200, 250 dollars for what you see here. So yeah, it always pays to hunt a bargain down. So once I've got this done and finished, put it in the car, put this monstrosity of an exhaust system in the car, and then I'm just going to sit and wait for the Mishimoto to arrive. And then I can drive this thing. So it's getting really, really close. In the meantime, I've, um, I've had all sorts of problems with this X5. I've got an E70 X5. And um, this compressor pump failed. Um, I bought a new head and stuff from AliExpress from China. Fine, put new rings on the pistons new cylinder head however all the moisture 
inside here corroded the um, I suppose the, the the electric motor shaft that drives the piston on the eccentric the the bearing actually froze solid um, or rusted solid on the um, on the piston um, that's what it looked like in the old cylinder head so that's what I was up against and I've inadvertently um, damaged the piston or bent it somehow because when this motor turns all it does now it burns for 40 amp fuses so I don't know if you can see probably can't really see it but anyway 40 amp fuses burn, burn out so that's what I've been doing in the meantime get me daily working get it, get it driving again so I can get to work and get around so just a small update, hopefully next video I'll have the car running under its own power. Thanks guys. Well, well, well. Something turned up in the mail today. So, I thought I'd do what every YouTube wanker does and do an unboxing. Um, I haven't opened it up, I've just cut that strap that's... um that was on it, I just cut that and all this just lifted up so let's have a look inside eh? finally arrived been very patient though it's not my first preference I would have preferred a um, a manual radiator instead I got a automatic spec one so Pretty well boxed. Okay. There we go. Um, right on, let's try and do this one handed as usual. I'll just pause it and I'll cut this bag. Right, I'll take the bag off. Um, I mean, it looks, looks good. I mean, it looks like any other alloy radiator that I've bought. Um, I can only assume, or well, compare it rather, to the, the one I had before. Um, the one that I got off eBay. I mean, it was much thicker than this. This looks as though it's standard um, OEM thickness and size. Um, it's got the automatic um, cooler engine, um, automatic transmission cooler port there, like the standard one. Um, it's got a little thing there to put the, uh, for the big, that big long screw that goes into the front of the um, AC evaporator, a condenser. Um, it's got little hooks. the factory shroud goes on these ones here I mean it, it's apparently a, a standard fit so what I need oh and the fins the fins look a lot so there's more um more of these cores actually than the factory one the cores are, are much um, bunched up and the fins are a lot smaller so here in Australia that means bugs get stuck in it, but I think I can get by that. My wife specified, I, she said I need to get a Mishimoto or a Koyo because um, she doesn't want this thing to overheat. So that's where we are. So I've got to try and make the thermo fan fit this and then fit the evaporator and the power steering cooling lines on and then we can put it in the car um, here we are, I got me a 90 steering shaft in the mail I bought this um, off a, a fella off the Facebook group here in Australia um, the reason I needed this because I had not enough clearance when I made the headers to clear this Guibo setup and it fell on the pipes I thought I had enough clearance but it's just not enough with the, um, the heat wrap on the, on the header pipe so Hence I bought one of those, however, 
this end here is 18 millimeters, whereas the E46s have 17 mil. Um, so I'm gonna have to take this off, swap him over with that. So that's my next little mission. And then I'll have steering in the car. Beautiful morning today. Got a day off, so I thought I'd um, see what the car's like with this fan on there. I've got to actually, well, obviously got to build a, a shroud for it, but it's pumping out so much air, and that's the car's not even um, warmed up yet. Which is, I mean, the factory fan, the OEM fan is going to put out heaps more flow. I mean, I get that. Um, so I've got to build a shroud for that. Uh, I'm not too sure whether to make one out of aluminium or aluminium or make one out of fiberglass like I did with the Range Rover. I think I might do a Range Rover style fiberglass one because it's um, pretty easy and I can sort of mould it to fit you know, around the hoses um, and whatnot. So I'll do all that. Um, the, the rattling noise is gone. Um, what you can hear now is the fuel injectors clicking away. The actual knocking sound that was coming from the uh, left bank is gone, so I'm happy about that. Um, I wasn't getting an OB, I have my OBD plug in the um, like a Bluetooth OBD port so I could connect the torque app to my phone and monitor the motor. And um, I wasn't getting the coolant signal. So I checked the coolant um, wires. See, they don't, you know, something's clicking around in there. Maybe it's a bad wire. Not too sure, but anyway, um, I checked the, the continuity between that and the DME up in the corner here. It's all good. So I might try that again later. Um, also, I'm going to make an airbox out of fiberglass. So, but. Other than that, and getting the brakes for the rear end, this thing's good to go. Um, I'll be able to take it for a few hot laps. So yeah, happy days. Well, I just knocked up a, um, an alloy. Aluminium, aluminum, if you want to call it, wherever you are. Um, just a heat shield for now. Um, and I've just mocked up cardboard piece down the bottom just to shape it and um, I've also made like a little bracket to hold this into place I'm going to make some more brackets to hold that into place um, my wife's coming home shortly with some fiberglass so I can knock the fiberglass um, shroud up and yeah, so, and I've also, I was also booked the car in for a, um, for an engineer certificate on the 20th of August. So, I've got a few little things to do before then. It's just got to jack, jack the motor up on the, um, on the right hand side uh, by about 10 millimetres, I reckon, just to clear the uh, sway bar. And... I think I'll, I'm just going to redo the, the centre bearing mount on the chassis. But um, it's getting awfully close now, way, eh? Really, really close. So, one car's going. <laughs> well, the other one's not. I've got an alternator problem. So, I've got another alternator coming from Sydney um, on Monday. So then hopefully I can get this thing going again. And I've also got another radiator. Because um, it's leaking bad. So yeah. That's so far where we're at guys. Thanks for watching. Um, when I finish the shred I'll, um, I'll stick that video up too. Thanks for watching. Bye.